Hello all, this is Ben Falk for KillerSites.com. Welcome to a KillerSites screencast on building a tag cloud with PHP and MySQL I. You'll often find tag clouds online in various blogs. For example, if you visit the KillerSites.com blog and scroll down a little bit, you'll notice we have a tag cloud on the right hand sidebar. So what we're going to be building today looks like this has two parts. We have a list section which is simply going to list all the tags, the tag ID and the count which refers to the number of times they're used and also the weight which I'll talk a little bit about later. Below the list we have the cloud itself. You'll notice that we have links to each of these tags and it links out to a tags.php page and they're sized according to their importance. For example, orange is the largest because it's used most often. The first thing that I want to do is to start with the database. I have phpMyAdmin open and I'm going to create a new database. I'm going to call it Tag Cloud. And instead of building out all of these tables by hand, I've actually exported this database already and I've included it with the source files. So you can go ahead, go to the import tab, select browse, and open up the database.sql file. And just click go, and it'll automatically import all the tables that we need for this tutorial. This tutorial assumes that you already have a basic blogging system in place. I'm only going to be talking about the tag cloud portion of tags. We are going to assume that you already have some sort of system in place that can add and remove tags from your blog posts. To give you an overview of the different tables that we just imported, we have our post table, which if you browse, it contains the ID of the post and the post title. I've kept things pretty simple as keeping in mind that this is a basic example. Obviously, if you were building out a full blog application, you'd have a lot more columns, you'd have content at the very least, probably a date, etc. But just for this example, we have the post table contains an ID of the post and the post title. And then we also have a tags table, which includes the tag ID and the tag name. And finally, we have a post to tags table, which allows us to link the posts and tags table together. It allows us to link the post ID with a tag ID. And this gives us a simple structure, which allows us to make posts make an individual blog post be able to support multiple tags, as many tags as we want, and also allows us to reuse tags. So for example, we'll only ever have one red tag because it already exists. If we were to add a red tag to an existing post, we would, instead of creating a brand new tag, we'd find the ID of that pre-existing tag and simply add it into the post tags table. We'd get the post ID of the post that we wanted to add this tag to, and then we would add the tag ID in place. With Coda open, let's establish some basic site structure. We're going to start out with an index.php file and two folders. We're going to have a models folder and a views folder. And while you follow along with this tutorial, I'm going to be using the MVC pattern. This means that our files are split up into three different types. We have models, views, and controllers. The controller is going to be our index.php file, and it is going to handle any user input. In this case, it's going to load our database, load any models, and any views. Our models are going to be placed within the models folder and that contains the main business logic of the application. It's going to contain um, the code that's actually needed to get our tags from the database and handle them properly. And finally the views, which are contained in the views folder, that's going to contain an HTML file which is then displayed out to the user. So let me create a couple more files. Within the models folder, we're going to have an open db.php file. We're going to have a closed db.php file. 
And finally, we're going to have the actual model itself, in which case I'm going to call this one tag cloud dot model dot php. And I should mention, I could potentially just call it tag cloud dot model. But in case someone had direct access to this file and could open up this file in the browser, if you left it at just dot model, the browser will assume that it's a plain text file and will display it. So I want to make sure it ends with .php so the browser understands to do something with the contents and not to display them immediately to the user. So the model portion allows me to specify easily what file it is in case I have multiple tag cloud files. Okay, and then within views, we're also going to have tag cloud view.php. So let's start by getting a couple of the basics in place. So I'm going to open up index and I'm going to start with my standard PHP tags and let's open up the database connection. So we're going to do that with an include once. Okay, like so. And then down at the end of the file, we're going to close the da database connection. And placing these both in include files means that we can easily reuse this code for other models and controllers in the rest of our application if we were to expand this. So with that in place, let's load the actual models. And I'm going to include once again, see. And I'm going to include models, tag cloud, dot model, dot PHP. And then we're going to actually create a tag cloud here. But I'm going to skip that portion for now, and we're going to simply load the view. Okay, like so. So we have the basic structure for our controller in place. It opens the database connection, it loads the model, it's going to take care of some creating of the tag cloud and then it'll display the view to the user and obviously close the database connection at the end. So let's go ahead and work on the open and close database files. And this is pretty standard. If you've watched any of my other tutorials discussing MySQL I, it's the same exact code. So I'm going to start with server. In my case it's localhost. user is going to be root, or password, or just leave it pass, it's also root. So your username and password details may change depending on your database setup. And lastly, I need a database and I called mine tag cloud. That's that. And then let's actually make the connection by creating a MySQL object. And that equals new MySQL. And we're going to pass in the server, the user, the password, and the database. Okay, so this file is set. Now let's go ahead and open up the uh, closed database. And let's close out the connection. And this is simply MySQL I close. Like so. Uh, 